to Food Theory with me, David Beck. Now, my ambition for Food Theory is to look at the latest scientific research that's coming out and to kind of give you an overview and a bit of a feel of what the newest science is really saying and to try to put it into perspective. Okay, so this is the first episode. Food and techniques to help you overcome procrastination and become more productive. Now, this isn't just about food. Obviously, I've got techniques in my title, too. So, you can expect a bit of mixed bag with this one. Hydration, uh, very important, obviously. Um, good ways of staying hydrated. Tea, coffee, green tea. You know, these are all fairly healthy drinks, providing you don't add too much sugar. Um, obviously water's the best for hydration. Um, staying hydrated during the day helps to reduce tiredness and keeps your brain hydrated. Obviously that's a good thing. Uh, looking for inspiration. A walk in the park increases brain activity, stimulates neurogenesis, the growth of new neurons in the brain, and boosts memory recall and formation and helps you wake up. So if you want to start your day right, go for a walk. Pretty simple, and preferably take your dog, if you've got one, that is. Do you need a sugar boost? Now, I would go for a banana, personally. They're lower in fructose than an apple, and fructose is something that isn't particularly good. It's not a very good kind of sugar. Uh, so, bananas are rich in potassium, vitamin C, which is good for the immune system, vitamin B6, and vitamin A, all in all. You know, a whole health for better health. Uh, bananas contain about 3 grams of fibre. Um, they also contain pectin, which may help moderate blood sugar levels and may help you keep full up for longer, which is good. Avoid a, avoiding a task because it's boring. Play some relaxing or stimulating music to make the task more fun. Now, let's say you have to do some, I don't know, boring paperwork, which involves a lot of copying and pasting. Now, this is the perfect task for music. Music without words may also help you concentrate. So if you are writing an essay, or something along the lines of that, not having any words in the songs does help you kind of formulate words, or at least it helps me. Eat for the task. A very simple but powerful idea. Protein keeps you full for longer. So it's a great breakfast. And something like scrambled eggs or eggs and bacon is a really good start to your day. Um, I would go for fats. Um, which provide a constant source of energy. So if you're a manual labourer or something, fats will be perfect. And perhaps sugars are better for short-term tasks where you need a lot of concentration. So for example, you could eat some sugar before an exam and it might help you perform. Top tip, try fasting for a uh, mental boost. It really does work. Uh, want to be more productive? Get the right amount of sleep for you and nap when tired. Top tip, sleeping helps long-term memory formation. Try taking a study nap. So I used to do these in the old days. I would, for example, read a book. I would read an essay, something along the lines of that. And then I would take a little nap if I was feeling tired. And I would actually find that I had remembered the whole thing, basically. It's a very powerful study aid if you're feeling a bit droopy. A fish a, a day keeps the doctor, or a neurologist away even. <laughs> Omega-3 fatty acids are found in salmon, mackerel, herring, lake trout, sardines, and albacore tuna. And they help to maintain heart and brain health. A cod liver oil helps too. The UK government recommends two portions of fish a week, the one of which should be oily, as such as one above. Now, I've actually found that personally Omega-3 does help me concentrate. It is a, a very healthy thing to eat, and I would highly recommend you uh, get at least the amount of fish the government recommends. So, I mind you, I wouldn't overdo it. Uh, just see what suits you, really. B vitamins help to generate energy, although some people may lack B12. Again, I recently found myself low in energy, so I started taking vitamin B12, and it does help. I feel like I've got a lot more energy recently, so 
Um, if you're feeling a bit tired quite a lot, then I would try taking some B12. It's found naturally in animal products, such as fish, poultry, meat, eggs, dairy. It's also found in fortified breakfast cereals and enriched soy or rice milk. A vegans and other groups may benefit from supplementing B12. So it's not just for vegans or vegetarians. Now, the B12 actually comes from a bacteria originally, so, uh, but good bacteria, anything that's kind of fermented would be good, such as kefir milk, uh, for example, or perhaps sauerkraut might contain, in fact it does contain vitamin B12, so it's worth thinking about, it's very healthy. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Oh dear. Researchers from the University of Maine believe certain nutrients in dairy, such as magnesium, could help to stave off memory loss. The vegan sources of magnesium include kelp, oats, almonds and cashew, cocoa and seeds. So again, macronutrients and micronutrients, it's kind of important you get your fair share of micronutrients, especially things like magnesium and selenium, which you can find in Brazil nuts. All of these will help you concentrate and stay more alert. So yeah, just eat a lot of nuts and seeds, basically, if you want to be healthy. Clear workspace, clear desktop and clear mind. Now I always find that maintaining a nice work environment and having things not too cluttered is quite useful. Um, the other thing I find that helps me personally is if I'm not too distracted, so try to eliminate distractions from your workspace if you're trying to work, obviously. Uh, creating a distraction-free zone can help fight procrastination, although don't clean the house uh, to avoid your work, which, believe me, I have done. Unstructured tasks can be more difficult. Give yourself a deadline. Turn your work into a game. See how many questions you can answer in 20 minutes, or disconnect from the internet if you get distracted. Okay, that's a fairly self-explanatory. Keep a diary. If you suffer from procrastination, keeping a record of what you get up to is a good way of confronting your own behaviour. Uh, so obviously if you have to think back to what you've done, it kind of might make you more productive in the future. Especially if you're writing a diary to uh, make yourself sound more impressive, even if it's just you reading it. Most importantly, be honest with yourself. Are we aware of things we aspire to? Now write down dates and times for specific tasks and stick to them. Better yet, start for, start the task now. So the best way of starting a task isn't to think, oh, I've got to spend four hours doing this or that or the other. Just think, I need to spend 20 minutes starting this task and break it down so it's much easier and more manageable. This is a really good way. For example, if you need to go to the gym, just think, I need to drive to the gym and go in. I don't think about the gym so much. It's a, a very good technique. Uh, most importantly, be kind to yourself. Worry and doubt can be powerful de demotivators. Allocate time to a task, stick to it, and enjoy other things in your life. If you constantly find yourself avoiding some tasks, it may be worth thinking about if the task is actually worth doing. If a task is worth doing, then make it a priority. Think of the benefits the task will bring. Rome wasn't built in a day after all, and commitment pays off. Thank you very much for your time. If you liked this video, please share, like and subscribe, you know. Share your procrastinations and productivity tips in the comments below. Um, this has been by me, and thank you very much.